Welcome back friends to the course on employment communication and today we will be concluding in lecture 25 the topic on group discussions. So, that we are in a position to enter the workshop or to go to the lab classes on a practical session of a group discussions may be 4 or 6 of them as much as time permits in this uh, course. So, we have for you today lecture 25 strategies for success in group discussions. The topics I will cover in this presentation is mostly of a nature of a complement to the previous lecture, lecture number 25. If in lecture number 25 I have uh, presented some concepts to you, in lecture number 25 this the present lecture I will be rounding up the entire topic on group discussion. So, it will be more or less revisionary in nature, it will be summative in nature this presentation lecture 25 on uh, strategies for success in group discussions. First of all I will talk about the types of group discussions, a simple uh, presentation, simple part of the presentation. Why do we have uh, GDs? And number 10 is 10 simple rules to easily crack a GD. Number 4, I will be talking about some techniques to initiate a GD and make a very good first impression. And what are the skills being judged in GDs? It seems to be similar to this uh, aspect we have done in the previous uh, lecture on what are the qualities looked for you, looked for in the candidates by the organizers of the group discussion. And finally, we end this topic with a summary. So, since this uh, video is of a revisionary nature, first of all we show you a short video on group discussion tips you should not miss, effective group discussion. <laughs> Hi friends, today we are going to talk about the art of group discussions, a presentation by successcds.net. Group discussions are an integral part of business school selection process. What is the purpose of group discussion? The group discussion is conducted to assess the managerial attributes of the candidates on parameters like communication skills, the ability to communicate effectively, leadership skills, they are all about managing people, either one-to-one -one or increasingly. Rational thought process, rational thought is employing the logic, known as thinking or understanding. Analytical and rational thinking, how quickly and clearly you can analyze a given situation. Great behavior, being only a coordinator in a group discussion, does not help. Coordinating a group discussion is a secondary role. In group discussion, the idea is to observe how a person speaks, what he speaks, his level of confidence, his ability to listen, and convince others, and also his behavior towards colleagues. What is the process of group discussion? Usually, in a typical group discussion, there are usually 7 to 12 people who discuss a topic for about 15 to 25 minutes. There are no specific instructions on how the topic should be discussed, who should speak first, or how the group should behave. Topics for group discussions The group discussion topics are pretty general and broad based and concern something that any student can discuss. These require no special knowledge, only an overall understanding of the issues involved. What should be the structure of group discussions? A debatable topic or problem is presented, either in writing on a blackboard, or is stated verbally by the person in charge, representing the organization. This person is called the moderator or coordinator. Skills required for group discussion. First is, communication abilities. The ability to communicate effectively your viewpoint is a key ingredient to being successful. 
The emphasis is on effectiveness, how well the others have understood your point. Second is, team skills. They are all about managing people, either one-to-one -one or increasingly, in a team setting. Third is, analytical skills. How quickly, clearly, and dispassionately, you can analyze a given situation. Remember, decisiveness, is an extremely valuable trait even in personal life, more so in professional life, just avoid indecision. The last but not the least is, general awareness or general knowledge. A thorough knowledge of your political, social, economic, business and other environment is required, a would-be manager, needs this knowledge to a greater degree. Here are some tips, for effective participation in a group discussion. Keep your knowledge of current affairs, especially hot topics up to date. If, it is a fresh interview for an industry or bank, then one should gather knowledge, about their mission, systems and challenges. It may be useful to hold mock group discussions, with friends or classmates. Preparedness and self-confidence, are the keys to success in a group discussion. Speak clearly, and loudly enough for everyone to hear what you are saying. Now, we will discuss some group discussion do's, and don'ts. Do's, be clear about your thoughts, believe firmly on what to say. Be concise on your delivery of thought. Play different roles according to the situation. State statistics to support your viewpoint. Read editorials of leading newspapers and magazines. Watch discussions on BBC, Star Plus and other channels. Try to summarize every discussion. Don'ts. Do not be too humorous. Do not speak for long. Do not try to raise irrelevant issues. Do not use too many examples to support your views. Do not bluff statistics. As you know, little knowledge is dangerous. Do not elaborate on just one area of any issue. Do not accept others' views without them. Now, we have come to the conclusion that, group discussions test your presence of mind, the depth of your knowledge, your communication skills, and your ability to argue logically. Wishing viewers all the very best. From successcds.net So apart from the fact that uh, you might have liked the GD, I hope you noticed that there was a small typo in the last uh, 5 minutes instead of thought at the end of the slide it was written T H O U G H. So, just keep that in mind. Now, let us come to business and uh, examine the types of GDs. If you have to talk about uh, the types of GDs as per the topics there are two. There is a small typo here the factual topics for example, the education policy of India and tourism in India. Reservations should be removed women make better managers and the th second is the abstract topics on such uh, aspects as A is an alphabet or 1 plus 1 makes 11 or twinkle twinkle little star. Why do organizations have GDs is the next uh, thing to be considered. First of all, it helps one to understand a subject more deeply and this is what the organization also wants that when you take up a work when you are part of them when you are employed with them, then you should be able to be not shifty, but be depth wise, depth wise wise I would say. You would like to go deep into a subject and understand it before doing anything about it. The second is uh, a GD improves your ability to think critically. We have talked about critical ability or critical thinking, critical analysis number 3. The GD helps the group to make a particular decision. As I said in the case study kind of uh, GD, there are 3, 4 questions at the end of the fictitious uh, case situation, which have to be decided, which have to be resolved, the problems have to be found a solution to. And GD is a uh, reason for this movement forward. 
Number 4, the GD also gives you the chance to hear ideas of the other discussants, otherwise uh, you might never know what is going on in their minds and uh, when you get a chance to he hear others or to listen to others, it enriches you. You see no two minds will think alike, so it is a merging of uh, good ideas from all directions. Number 5, it improves your listening skills because you work on this aspect of your communication skills. Number 6, it increases your confidence in speaking. I would say that those of you, those students or candidates who feel that uh, they lack in uh, speaking ability or speaking English should more and more participate in GD whenever and wherever they are given a chance because this is uh, a very good reason for having a GD is that you are improving on your speaking levels or speaking competency. And number last is it can change your attitudes. Successive practice sessions of GD can make you undergo a slight change of how you approach others, how you discuss an issue, how you delve into it, what come out, comes out of it. So, the uh, idea of practice sessions for GDs being held again and again is that overall over a period of time you will observe that you are changing, your attitudes are changing. It means your negative atti attitudes or negative uh, qualities would go down and your positive qualities would go up in you as a person, as a worker. There are 10 simple rules to easily crack a GD and the first is to keep eye contact because when you are keeping eye contact, you are in fact in direct communication, you are in the business. Number 2 is as we said in the previous uh, lecture number 24, if you initiate the GD, it shows that you have leadership qualities in you. It is also to be polite, to be full of manners when you allow others to speak, do not butt in between, do not interrupt, let the other complete what he or she has to say and then when you find a gap, when the eye contact ends, then it is time for you to speak. Number 4, do not be in a hurry, speak clearly, be slow and deliberate upon your points as you speak. Number 5, again the hallmark of a leader that uh, when the GD starts diversing and diluting and dissolving, the leader is able to assess this situation and quickly bring the discussions back to track because he or she says, friends I think we are losing track of the topic and I think we are wasting time and I think we need to get back to business of the topic. Number 6 is to have a positive attitude, do not have a negative attitude towards anybody during the course of this GD. Remember that it is a role play, it is simply you are acting for 10-15 minutes because you are trying to show how you will work when you are working as a group or as a team in the organization which is holding the GD for selecting you to the next stage which is the personal interview, the final stage of the employment communication process. Speak sensibly that is uh, do not be too humorous, do not be too low, too shallow, utilize your senses while speaking. Number 8, employ your listening power, put in action your patient, uh, your patience the length of time to which you can be patient and listen carefully to others because only when you listen then can you act upon it when you speak or when it is your turn to speak. Number 9, there is no need to go into too much of details because you see it is a question of time. Your discussion has been limited to 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So, be frank that there is no time to go into much details. And tenth and most important is be formally dressed because it is a formal situation. Now what are the techniques you will employ or use to initiate a GD and make a very good first impression? Maybe you should be a master of quotes, you should have definitions on your fingertips, you can ask questions, you can make shock statements to surprise the people in the participant participation group. You can have facts, figures and statistics on your fingertips and uh, be sure about that, that they are actually facts, figures and statistics. Do not just blabber anything and say that this I found in this paper or this I read somewhere, 
Be clear and exact if you are mentioning a fact, figure and statistics. Your reference should be ready to hand. Have a plethora of short stories and anecdotes and if required, if time permits, especially in the case of 15 minutes GD, you can narrate if it takes uh, maybe 1 minute and uh, general statement. Let us come to the next do not'ts, the next aspect. What are the do not'ts of a GD? First is do not lose your temper, this is most important. This is not an argument, this is a discussion going on. So, hold on tight to your short temper. The next one is do not shout, do not be using loud volume, speak at an even pitch and a medium pitch, even tone and uh, equable volume. Number 3, do not use your hand movements too much which has already been said because gestures like finger pointing and table thumping you know like this, this can appear aggressive and nobody likes aggressive people at the workplace. Number 4, do not dominate the discussion. You are showing the largeness of your heart, you are showing the maturity of your mind, you are showing that you are a good worker, you are proving that you will be a good worker through the process of the GD, if you can allow other discussions a time to contribute. So, as I said in my previous lecture, make even contributions. Number 5 is do not draw too much on personal experience, this is not the time when you can say come September and all roses you know, you cannot say October or you cannot refer to specific small incidents of your life. And number last is do not interrupt, wait for a speaker to finish what she or he has to say before you start speaking. You notice the gap and you notice that the eye contact changes, there is a gap, there is a break of eye contact and it is a verbal indicator that now you can speak. What are the skills which are judged in group discussions and we have two slides on that. First, how good you are at communication with others that is your communication skills. What is your behavior like in a group or a team? Number 3, are you open minded? Number 4, your listening skills are being assessed and number 5, how do you make your presentation of your opinion. So, we move further and your leadership and decision making skills are being judged or evaluated, your analytical skills and depth of the subject knowledge are also being assessed. Number 3, your problem solving and critical thinking skills are being watched, observed and noted and your attitude and confidence are also being taken into consideration. So, we have a, a short presentation here, a video which I would like you to see. Welcome to this ELC self-learning video. Today we are going to talk about researched group discussions. We will look at two examples and compare them. Our students are going to demonstrate a bad example first. Watch and see their problems. Hey there, I want to talk about the aging population in China. I think that the cause of aging population in China is the one child policy. This means there are not enough young people. Mm, my parents said that the elderly in China needs a lot of home care services, so the Chinese government have to build more home. And young people are not giving birth, so there is not enough people to do all the work. And also... No, your point is silly and you got no proof. The elderly need money more than the retirement homes. How can you say that people in China don't give birth? There are 1.3 billion people in China, I think. I've got no proof. Many people say that there aren't enough homes for the elderly, and I think they have to be built so the elderly can have some space to live. Mm, and also, there's a blog post which said that 
the birth rate in China is low. So the young people is not giving birth, right? That's your proof? What kind of proof is that? Hey, Wing and Sandy, do you have any other opinion? Um, okay, let's talk about the aging population in China. Well, I agree with all of you. Uh, I think the elderly need homes and money, and I also think young people don't give birth. So, there is an aging problem in China. Yeah, so we have finished our discussion. I'm going to have lunch now. Bye. Okay, that's a very bad example. As you can see, the problems include not using credible sources, not listening to others, not interrupting appropriately, not allowing others to speak, not interacting with others, and not concluding the discussion. Okay, now it's time for a good example. Hello everyone. Hello. Let's start by talking about the causes of China's aging population problem, shall we? According to Morgan Pot in his 2006 paper, the major causes of China's aging problems is inconsistent population policies since 1949. Women were encouraged to give birth in the 1950s. The baby boomers from 1960s are now becoming the major sector of the senior population. So Steph, what do you think about these points? Yes, I agree with you. But personally, I feel that the one-child policy launched in 1979 is also a reason for the aging population problem. The policy reduces the size of the younger generation. Any comments, Sandy and Wing? Um, I'm wondering whether the problems can be solved with just one solution. Maybe we have to figure out solutions for each cause. Uh, in Zhang and Gosu's article published in 2006, uh, it was proposed that the Chinese central government should adopt policies to improve the quality of life of the elderly, for example, by promoting the private pension funds. May I interrupt for a moment? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, I have one more suggestion for taking care of the quality of life of the elderly. I think the government should provide more homes and centers for the elderly as well. Let's take Finland as an example. That's right. Let's sum up our discussion, shall we? The major causes of China's aging problems are one-child policy, inconsistent population policy, did you notice a difference? The second group of students were polite, well-prepared, and conducted the discussion effectively. They had good structure and used their time well. They encouraged each other to participate and contribute to the discussion. They were courteous and expressed their own opinions respectfully. They engaged with each other's opinions critically, but politely. And finally, they summed up their arguments at the end of the discussion. That's all for today. Don't forget, if you need okay. any further help, so you can always ask I your lecturer or the staff uh, in the city. We have seen a very good uh, video which has summed up both the bad example and the good example. It is time now for our summary. Group discussions have now become the sine qua non in various selection procedures. It is the most common thing in today's employment processes. Whether it is recruitment in a prestigious firm or admission in an MBA institute, aspiring candidates have to go through the rigors of what is called a group discussion or GD in short. Number three, what exactly is a group discussion? Normally, in a group discussion, a leaderless group of eight to ten candidates is formed and is given a specific situation to analyze and discuss within a given time limit, maybe 10, 
to 15 minutes. The number of participants and the time limit given for discussion may vary from situation to situation depending on situation to situation. Number 5, a panel of moderators observes and evaluates them during the course of the discussion. Then broadly, the moderators are those who represent the recruitment recruiters or the organization or the company holding the GD. For this the second stage of the employment process, they are assessing the candidates on the following points or parameters, command over the spoken language which is of course, English. English is the workplace communication language. Number 2, knowledge convincing ability, ability interpersonal skills, problem solving skills, conceptualizing skills, leadership skills, body language, creativity, confidence and assertiveness. Let us have a few tips for cracking the group discussion. Number 1, always be polite. Try to use phrases like I would like to share my views on and then you move ahead or yes, I agree, but no need to get shouting and get touchy or emotional on the issue and react. Second, if you have understood the topic in the correct way, then do initiate the GD. It will show your leadership skills. Number 3, never be hesitant to speak if others are speaking, but you need to look for an opportunity, a break to enter into the discussion. Number 4, be your natural self avoid putting on a show for the moderators. It will be very easily understood that you are faking and you are not genuine or natural. Number 5, the score you receive is based your performance or your grading whatever you are getting depends both on what you say and more importantly on how you say it. Your gestures and your mannerisms are most likely to reflect your attitude or your mental state of mind or you as you are really you than what you are saying or your words. Number 6 to be assertive, but not dominating. Number 7 to be patient, but do not lose your temper. Number 8 to never get involved in one to one discussion with any participant. Numbers 9 bring in as many diverse aspects as you can to the discussion. The next is to avoid taking names of the participants. It is good to address them by calling them as my dear friend, be formal. Next is to never argue incessantly, incessantly that is continuously with any of your group members. Remember that nothing is to be taken to heart. Next to maintain eye contact with as many members of the group as possible. Remember that you are sitting in an oval formation or in an O shape or in a C formation. So, maintain eye contact with as many members of the group as possible. The next is to maintain a positive to listen talk ratio or positive talk listen ratio. Now and then you must listen and you must do it as if you are maintaining your punctuality. Keep your points brief and be to the point. Use facts, figures, examples, statistics, data to substantiate your points. Never pinpoint anyone with your finger. Do not do like this, this while speaking during the GD. Finally, the last point, practice makes all human beings perfect. So, never stop yourself from practicing. Practice, practice, practice GD and you will see that you will be successful as a group discussant. These are the references I have used for the preparation of this uh, lecture and uh, thank you for being with me and we shall meet again very soon. Thank you once again. May God bless you.